Welcome to United Network News, the official news channel for CARE, the Center for Amity and Restoration of Earth. I'm Sunny Gold. At UNN, you get the real news. Through our field messengers, we show you the truth about what's really taking place in our communities. We also bring you stories to help you remember who you are and why you're here, as well as regional stories that impact the people. And our World Situation Report reveals what's happening throughout the multiverse. We are here to restore Earth. In the U.S., it is Friday, May 31st, 2024. Looking for a tranquil retreat? Japanese gardens are a great way to relax and appreciate the simplicity of nature. In Italy, the people are celebrating the Tulip Spring Festival, complete with beautiful flowers, floats, and fun for the whole family. You often hear about the importance of being kind to others, but just how well do you receive kindness from other people? Pharmacists in France are on strike and it's impacting 90% of the pharmacies in the country. And a reported outbreak of bird flu is affecting chicken farms in the US. It's forcing farmers to kill off entire flocks. This is Kaylin Gipp, messenger for United Network News. Here's a look at today's field messenger reports from all around the world. Today we explore a Japanese garden where carefully designed beauty and harmony connects visitors with nature. UNN field messenger Claudia explains the history and cultural significance of Japanese gardens. Field messenger Claudia reporting from Gibbs Gardens in Ball Ground, Georgia for UNN. If you are looking for a serene and calming outdoor space, look for a Japanese garden. These gardens are known for the meticulous attention to detail and their use of symbolism to create harmonious and balanced environments. These large and vibrant store gardens promote relaxation and mindfulness. Japanese gardens combine the beauty of landscapes with elements such as rocks, water, structures, plants and sand arranged to create a world that evokes a sense of calm and serenity. You can also find structures like pavilions, lanterns and gates. Lanterns are both functional and decorative. Japanese gardens date back to the 8th century when they were introduced in Japan by Buddhist monks. These gardens were initially created for religious purposes, but over time they became a symbol of wealth and status. Japanese gardens are also heavily influenced by the natural landscape of Japan, which is characterized by mountains, rivers, and forests. Whether you have a small backyard or a sprawling mm. landscape, you can create a space that is not only aesthetically pleasing, but also spiritually fulfilling. I hope you enjoyed this report. Claudia Field Messenger from Dawsonville, Georgia, reporting for UNN. Thank you. Every spring, the tranquil region of Umbria, Italy, transforms into a lively hub of color and joy during the Tulip Spring Festival. UNN Field Messenger Maya brings us to the heart of this celebration. Hello, I am Maya, reporting this time from Umbria region, Castiglione del Lago village overlooking the Trasimeno Lake. Castiglione del Lago is a picturesque little village situated on a peninsula in the Trasimeno Lake, considered the Umbrian Sea. The inhabitants celebrated this Festa del Tulipano since 1956. The whole village is decorated with tulip flowers to win an award for most beautiful tulip arrangement. There are to be found brass bands, processions, and games of nobles and the common people in historical costumes. This event usually lasts five to seven days. On Sunday, 
the festival culminates into a big procession with decorated floats covered with thousands of tulip petals arranged painstakingly into artistic compositions. Hope you enjoyed the event and thank you for watching. We want you to become a UNN field messenger. These are everyday people just like you who want to make a difference in their community. You don't need any special training or equipment. Just use the camera on your mobile phone and show us what's happening in your area. You send us your videos and our production team will create the report for you. Our new website is now up and running at unitednetwork.earth. You can submit your Field Messenger reports directly through the Field Messenger tab at the top of the page. You can also email your reports to our new email address at fieldmessenger at unitednetwork.earth. Hey, I'm Kirsten from Switzerland. This is Wayne from Tucson. Hi, my name is Desmond from Ghana. I am Claudio from Dawsonville, Georgia. I'm Mikey from Pretoria, South Africa. Hi, I'm Steve McGrath, Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. People from all around the world are coming together. Happy day, beautiful world. We are here in a rather small urban garden, and this video is just to show you the joys that we've had in this garden with electric gardening. When news happens in their area, they show us what's really going on. We have people in the streets protesting for and against. At United Network News, our field messengers are changing the face of news. This is Field Messenger Helen reporting with Nature and I'm going to talk to you about the bees again. Take the next step in restoring our planet. Become a UNN Field Messenger today. Hi, I'm Stephanie from South Africa. If it's going to be, it's up to me. If it's going to be, it's up to me. 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 It's up to all of us. We're UNN and we're taking back the news. Kindness is crucial in the new earth. Being kind to others is important, but learning how to receive kindness can sometimes be challenging. Lindsay Andriotti helps inspire people to lead the restoration of our planet. She calls these people imaginals. Okay, Lindsay is back with us and we're talking about kindness. And Lindsay, we've talked about the four pillars of kindness. So being kind to yourself, being kind to other people. And today, this is really important too. We're talking about receiving kindness from other people because sometimes this is an awkward thing for people mm -hmm. and we don't really feel comfortable. Like you're being nice to me or, you know, oh, you're, you're showing me kindness. Like sometimes we don't know how to react to that. So true. Sunny, this is one of my favorite ones. And it's probably the one that I end up coaching and helping people through the most <laughs> because we're not taught how to receive with grace a kind thought, a kind experience, some gesture. We often are thinking, we deflect, we turn others away. We tell them in our own heads, I'm not worthy of that. I can't accept this. You know, we do so much to tell people not to be kind to us that it becomes almost unfortunate because we miss out on so many things that are really meant to help fill our cup as well. So a great example is when someone pays you a compliment, yes. depending on who it's coming from, I like to use an example, what if it's a family member, okay? You usually trust your family members to tell you the truth, and you usually don't think that they want something from you other than, you know, I just wanted to tell you this. 
Imagine how many times during a day or week or month that you actually deflect one of your kids or your husband saying, mom, I love your hair. It's so pretty. Mm-hmm. And you go, oh, thanks. I had it done yesterday. Or what? <laughs> right? Yeah. Instead, yeah. Of, instead of, oh, thank you. What do you like about it? Or if you don't even have the time for that, just what are you seeing? I'd love to hear more. Uh-huh. Receive it. Take it in. They meant to tell you how beautiful or whatever they wanted to share in that moment. And we often try to cut it off as fast yeah. as we can. Mm-hmm. And oh yeah, okay, thanks. Or we tell a story. So that's one. The second aspect of doing it with grace is being able to receive eye to eye. You know, mm. so someone may say something to you like, I really want to help you with that project. And you think to yourself, no way, they don't want to do this. You know, you close your eyes, you think, you do something. (laughs) You're making up a story about what it is that they're wanting versus they just said what they wanted. The more you can receive eye to eye, face to face, whether it's electronically or in person, always better in person so you can feel the energy of it, Mm -hmm. you will receive a gift, just not only of the energy, but of that connection between two people that says, I see you. And it's, it's powerful stuff. It is elixir. So learning to do it with grace is, is a a really important skill and one that we should start to perfect. Yeah. And I feel like we should be teaching this to our kids at an early age too. You're using that example of, Oh, your hair looks nice. I remember when I was, I think I was in high school and my mom's friend paid me a compliment about my hair. Oh, I really like, you know, the way your hair looks today or something like this. And the first thing I did was come back at her with, oh, something negative. Oh, I tried to do this, but it didn't really work out. But, you know, something like that. And she stopped me. This is probably one of the best things she could have ever done because, you know, friend of the family, she cared about me. And she said, honey, accept the compliment. She's like, don't put yourself down. This is a really good thing about you. I'm, I'm trying to express that to you. So accept it. And she said it in a very loving way. And ever since that day, I totally changed my perspective on compliments. Cause you're right. I felt like I wasn't worthy of that. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, I don't want to be boastful if I'm just like, well, thank you. And you know, whatever. I just felt like it was better to co- like be condescending of myself, mm-hmm. which where did you get that from? Like, I, 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 that's a good question. I have not studied the psychology on why that happens. Why is it yeah. typical that we go to the other side? I would say this though. One other thing, you know, compliments are one thing. And generally the, the kindest thing you can do in return is just say, thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. That's it. Yeah. Talking about another way that people are kind, sometimes we need support or help. Something happens, we're needing, I don't know, a friend to bring us a meal because a family member has gone sick or whatever. It's in those moments that it's especially important to say, thank you, I would appreciate your help. Because Mm. so many people do reach out and say, oh, I'd love to be in service. How can I bring, you know, what does your family need? We know this has happened. How can we be of service? And how many times do we just go, oh, no, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. We got it. Everything's okay. You know, and it's not except acceptance is a beautiful gift to the person who's trying to send the kindness. Kindness is an infinity symbol. So we give it, we receive it, we give it, we receive it. Nothing is worse than lopping off that infinity symbol. Mm. Nothing is worse. And so you have to be able to accept and receive and give and receive. And the better we get at the receiving part, the better the giving gets. It's amazing. Yeah. Empathy is a profound ability that enriches our social lives by allowing us to understand and share others' feelings. Research has shown that empathy isn't just a natural trait, but can be cultivated through social interactions. Positive empathy supports cooperation and enhances teamwork, making it especially valuable in professional settings. Research research indicates we are born with empathy, which likely evolved for child rearing and community collaboration. Factors like financial stress and poor health can impact empathy and shared interests and experiences can enhance it. 
Tools like the Random App of Kindness offers games that help users practice reading emotions and responding appropriately. Empathy can be developed and is crucial for building healthy relationships with one another through shared experiences. Innovative approaches to mental health are changing lives in Central Africa with Strong Minds, a community-based initiative led primarily by women. Departing from traditional mental health care, Strong Minds empowers local non-professional volunteers to lead group therapy sessions. This interpersonal approach identifies triggers like life changes or social conflicts that contribute to depression and trauma. Participants share experiences and brainstorm coping strategies during six weeks of sessions. Volunteers, often former participants, receive training to facilitate sessions and treatment. This model helps dismantle the stigma around mental health. It shows individuals how to open up and share with their peers who often have had similar experiences. Since its inception in 2013, Strong Minds has treated more than half a million individuals. With programs expanding across Africa and a pilot in the United States, Strong Minds is revolutionizing mental health care, one community at a time. In the heart of Helsinki, Audi stands tall, a library created from a collaboration between more than 3,000 citizens, architects, and planners. Audi is a elegant three-story building of Finnish spruce, steel, and glass sprawled across 185,000 square feet. While a third is dedicated to library books, two-thirds of its space offers public amenities. The ground floor is an inviting social area with a restaurant, theater, chessboards, and event spaces. The second floor is for creative workspaces, game rooms, and high-tech tools like 3D printers, laser cutters, and digital wood sculpting. The top floor, bathed in natural light from circular skylights, welcomes you with cozy reading spaces and invites you to enjoy the panoramic terrace outside. Audi isn't just a library, it is a testament to civic pride. Helsinki citizens can rightfully claim this as their own and show what can be achieved when a community comes together. We are United Network News. Every day we release real stories from real people all over the world. Hill Messenger reporting from Gold Coast, Australia. Denmark. Canada. Uganda. From Atlanta in Southern California. In their own words, people like you share what's really happening in their area. At UNN, you are the news. You are creating a new world with infinite possibilities. You are the restoration plan. Come join us for the real news every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday only on United Network. We're UNN, and we're taking back the news. In France, about 90% of pharmacies have closed in protest, leaving some regions without operational pharmacies for the day. Healthcare professionals are concerned about more than just pay and conditions. Issues include drug shortages, rural pharmacy closures, and training reforms. Unions are demanding higher pay to offset rising inflation and will meet with the National Health Insurance Authority next week. The protests also feature demonstrations in many towns and a march in Paris from the pharmacy school to the economy ministry. A major issue is the potential government plan to facilitate online sales of over-the-counter medications. Officials assure pharmacists' monopoly on drug sales will remain intact, and large supermarkets and online giants like Amazon won't gain access to medication sales. About 550 short-term prisoners in Scotland will be released early, beginning in late June, to ease prison overcrowding. The Scottish government is calling this move unprecedented and necessary for the safety and well-being of both staff and inmates. 
Prisoners eligible for release include those serving sentences of fewer than four years due for release within six months, rolled out in four stages to support resettlement. Life sentences, sex offenders, and those with domestic abuse convictions are excluded. This move has been met with criticism from opposing parties, opposition parties, with some attributing it to the failure to modernize the prison estate. Victim support organizations will be informed about release dates upon request, acknowledging concerns victims may have. Other measure, measures include electronically monitored bail and a future bill to end under 18 imprisonment. Germany is launching a new work permit called the Opportunity Card on June 1st, 2024, aimed at attracting skilled workers. This initiative allows non-EU citizens to live in Germany for up to a year while searching for a job, addressing the country's shortage of around 400,000 skilled employees annually in fields like engineering, IT, and healthcare. The card lets holders work part-time and undertake trial jobs, smoothing the transition to full-time employment and longer-term residency. Applicants need at least two years of vocational training or a relevant university degree, proficiency in German or English, and enough funds to cover their stay. A point system evaluates candidates based on qualifications, experience, language skills, age, and more. Interested people can apply at the German consulate or a local foreigner's registration office. New research has revealed dangerous levels of toxic forever chemicals in water sources near garment factories in Bangladesh, posing serious health risks to residents. Many samples had PFA levels exceeding EU and US regulatory limits, with some containing globally banned chemicals. Used in manufacturing since the 1950s, PFAs are persistent pollutants that degrade very slowly, potentially remaining in water sources for centuries. They have been connected to serious illnesses, including certain cancers. The textile industry, a major sector in Bangladesh, accounts for 50% of global PFA use. Bangladesh lacks specific PFA regulations, but the study's findings were compared with international standards. The contamination poses a major threat to residents as local water bodies are essential for irrigation, agriculture, and drinking water. The recent relaxation of hotel regulations in China is expected to impact both tourists and local businesses significantly. Authorities have eased restrictions, allowing all hotels to accept foreign guests, which previously was limited to only select establishments. This change aims to boost tourism revenue by offering more affordable accommodation options to foreign visitors. Hotel staff are now required to gather detailed information from foreigners, including passport scans and visa details, instead of turning them away. The relaxation includes an extension of visa-free travel to several European countries until the end of 2025, and easier payment options via local e-wallets. These measures follow calls from Chinese leadership for visitors to experience the real China, countering negative international perceptions. Illegal fishing in Cambodia is creating a dangerous situation for local fishers. Authorities have identified Cambodian ports as the origin of trawlers responsible for extensive marine life destruction. Enforcement by the Fisheries Administration is weak with trawlers often operating undeterred in protected waters. Trawler operators, though aware of conservation zones, admitted to continued activity in these areas due to insufficient patrols and enforcement, particularly at night. Many fishers report the widespread bribery of fishery administration officials to avoid penalties, severely undermining regulations. This activity is destroying fish stocks, 
leaving many fishers impoverished as they struggle to compete with the well-financed illegal operations. The situation is dire as confrontations between small-scale fishers and trawlers often end in tragedy, with lives lost in the struggle for dwindling resources. Colombia's Congress has voted to ban bullfighting starting in the year 2027. The ban follows extensive lobbying by animal rights groups who claim bullfighting is a brutal practice rooted in colonialism. Despite its historical recognition as a cultural tradition, some cities have already implemented restrictions. The ban has significant implications for areas where bullfighting remains popular. It will affect tens of thousands of workers employed directly or indirectly by the bullfighting industry. The government will need to find alternative employment for these individuals and identify new uses for bullfighting arenas. The decision could also impact local economies reliant on revenue from bullfight tourism and related activities. Orange juice producers may turn to mandarins as wholesale prices increase due to expected poor harvests in Brazil. Futures markets hit a high of $4.95 per pound as Brazilian growers predict a 24% drop in yield, worsened by citrus greening disease, heat stress, and drought. Brazil, which produces 70% of global orange juice exports, faces its third consecutive tough harvest. Florida has also suffered from hurricanes and citrus greening, reducing its output. The International Fruit and Vegetable Juice Association calls the situation a crisis, considering lobbying for rule changes to include other citrus fruits in orange juice. Consumer demand for orange juice has dropped by 20% due to rising prices and changing habits. Manufacturers are faced with either using lower quality juice, blending with other fruits, or raising prices, leading to higher costs for consumers. A reform to introduce a licensing plan for tobacco retailers in Victoria, Australia is expected by Christmas time. Unlike the strict licensing for lottery tickets and alcohol, any shop can currently sell cigarettes, leading to a booming black market. Independent retailers have lost significant revenue due to the rise in illegal cigarette sales, which are cheaper and easily accessible. Retail executives note the loss of legitimate sales brings further harm as customers purchasing tobacco typically buy other items too. Public health experts argue the solution lies in better enforcement of existing laws and controlling supply chains, not lowering cigarette prices. Statistics show declining smoking rates, especially amongst teenagers, although vaping is gaining popularity. Recent federal measures now require vaping to be prescribed and have tightened import restrictions. A new report shows 25% of Americans are using buy now, pay later programs, with one in three using them for necessities. Usage of these programs surged tenfold during the pandemic, leading to new rules requiring consumer protections similar to those for credit cards. While credit cards often carry high interest rates, buy now, pay later programs typically split payments into installments without interest. However, these services could lead to increased debt as they don't require credit checks, making it easier for people to spend beyond their means. The report indicates more people are maxing out their credit cards with delinquency rates returning to pre-pandemic levels. Credit card debt is rising again after a pandemic dip driven by economic stimulus payments that had helped many catch up on their finances. 
The U.S. Supreme Court has revived the National Rifle Association, or NRA's, lawsuit against former New York State official Maria Vullo. The lawsuit accuses Vullo of coercing financial institutions to cut ties with the gun rights group. The ruling highlights the First Amendment, warning officials against using their power to punish free speech. The National Rifle Association, which claims Vulo's actions retaliated against its advocacy following a 2018 school shooting, seeks monetary damages. The case now returns to lower courts for further examination. Vulo's call for banks and insurers to avoid the NRA was seen as targeting the group, leading some insurers to stop selling NRA-endorsed products. This case highlights the tension between regulatory power and free speech impacting the operation of advocacy organizations. Also in the U.S., a reported avian influenza outbreak has hit a massive flock of 4.2 million egg-laying chickens in Sioux County, Iowa. This is the first bird flu case reported in Iowa this year, and the infected flock is the largest impacted in the state since 2022 and the largest nationwide this year. The entire flock will be called to prevent further spread, triggering a disaster proclamation from the Iowa governor effective through June 27th. This outbreak could pose significant consequences for the local supply and food supply, as Iowa is the top U.S. egg producer. Residents and businesses reliant on egg production face economic distress, rising egg prices, and potential job losses. Minnesota faced similar issues, affecting 1.4 million egg farm birds and 81,000 commercial turkeys. Egypt has significantly increased the price of subsidized bread to allocate more funds to essential services. This move, however, risks causing social unrest as the country struggles with high inflation. The new price has been raised substantially from what it has been since the late 1980s, and while it remains subsidized, the increase comes at a challenging time for many Egyptians. Roughly two-thirds of the population relies on this affordable bread, making the price hike particularly painful for those who live below or just above the poverty line. In recent years, food prices have risen while the size of subsidized bread has been reduced. Many see this latest hike as just another blow to the poor who are already struggling with reduced purchasing power due to the weakening Egyptian pound and ongoing economic hardships. A recent court ruling in South Africa has forced municipalities and farm owners to provide essential services like water to farm dwellers and labor tenants. This decision has significantly benefited those living on farms who previously had to travel long distances to fetch water, often facing dangerous conditions. Despite this victory, many still lack basic services. Farm dwellers face severe challenges, including job scarcity and systemic abuse. Women in particular report high rates of sexual abuse and exploitation. Farm owner harassment, harassment restrictive practices, and threats have also been reported, including attempts to seize livestock and property. Farm dwellers often face livestock poisoning and poor treatment, regardless of whether farm ownership has changed post-apartheid. An increasing number of people in sub-Saharan Africa are facing severe health challenges due to the prohibitive cost of diabetes treatment. A month's dose of insulin in Nigeria costs half the monthly minimum wage. Parents of children with type 1 diabetes often find themselves in desperate situations, unable to afford life-saving insulin. Diabetes-related complications, such as foot ulcers, often go untreated due to traditional beliefs, attributing them to spiritual attacks, delaying medical intervention. By the time patients seek hospital care, the infection may necessitate amputation. While treatments for HIV, malaria, and tuberculosis are available for free, 
Diabetes care requires out-of-pocket expenses many cannot afford. Patients with type 2 diabetes often need multiple medications, but can only afford a fraction. This inconsistent treatment leads to complications and premature death, highlighting a critical health crisis in the region. We have an exciting new announcement. We have launched a new global TV service specifically for the UNN community. Thousands of live TV channels, 60,000 movies on demand, over 30 languages and live sports from around the globe. Between all the separate streaming services and cable for live TV and sports packages, it can cost well over $200 a month. But now with United TV, you can have it all for only $15.99 a month. Go to unitedtv.org and check it out. Get so much more for so much less. And now, the World Situation Report with Kimberly Gogan from the Office of the Guardian. How the original five human tribes of Earth came to be ruled by the bloodline families. And what it takes to finally break free of deep state rule. Part 2.0 of the History of Celestials. Not all programs run against humanity are of human origin, as we discover the base root of human interface quantum technology. The World Health Organization, World Economic Forum, and governments have absolutely no control over the narratives they run. And an update on the deep state meetings that took place earlier this week as they attempt to run the world with no money, no control, and no quantum AI. Now here's Kimberly Gogan with the Office of the Guardian. Hi, Kim. Welcome back. Yeah, I know. God, it feels like it's been forever. I'm like, did I talk about that? Did I talk? No, I haven't said anything about that yet. So. Yeah. There's there's a lot to talk about today because, you know, you weren't on the news on Wednesday. So where do you want to start? All right. Well, uh, let's start with some regular news okay. uh, quickly, um, and then we'll go into the meetings, and then we'll talk about the good stuff. Well, okay. And it will make a little bit more sense. Okay. Okay. So uh, yesterday, uh, 34 counts, um, uh, Trump was indicted. Oh. I have to mention this for a reason. So, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, and allegedly there's some kind of felony involved. I don't know. I don't really follow this, but oh, yeah. I'm only following it because of a few things I've heard. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> Apparently, the sentencing is sometime next month, uh, about 30 days, and allegedly the state of New York is preparing for him to go to jail, which mm -hmm. none of these people really ever go to jail, do they? No. But the rumblings that I've heard amongst the deep state uh, is that there's a possibility that we may have another Epstein switcheroo. Okay. So go to jail allegedly commit suicide as a martyr and then except there's nobody coming out on the other side because he's not alive unlike Epstein. Yeah. Epstein is alive and well and someplace else so yeah um but they think that this is going to be enough to start a civil war now if you haven't seen it, uh, the reason why we're kind of putting two and two together on how they plan to orchestrate this, because if you haven't seen it, there's a new movie out called Civil, Civil War. Hmm. Uh, and it's about a group of journalists that are um, interviewing the president, not necessarily anyone in particular, but the president uh, as he exits Washington, D.C., due to the fact in the movie they call them a group of the Western forces, predominantly from California and Texas, that are going to take over the country. Hmm. Is That's this what coming it says out in the theaters, Kim, or where, where is this movie? Um, I saw it streaming online. I uh, okay. haven't actually watched the whole thing yet. I haven't had time to do that, but um, that's the gist of it. Uh, kind of scanned, scanned through it based on somebody else's suggestion uh, in about 15 minutes. So you can see how much the movie I watched. <laughs> it was an hour and a half long. I just didn't have time, but it, he felt it was important. So I thought I would scan through it. And um, But based on what I'm hearing from the remnants of what you would call the deep state 
<laughs> kind of sort of leadership uh, is that they are hoping uh, for a financial crash, then a civil war here in the States. America will officially fall um, and then uh, China will take over the world. So they're still working on this plan, either that or uh, there's still talk about the seven different parts of the world, of course, which they, of all of them, they, they will still control. Um, mm -hmm. So all seven. Uh, then I've heard chatter about nine possible places of control in the world and they will control all nine. And they're having a little bit of a discussion on how they're going to do this, but it's kind of like a fantasy, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, I, there's a lot of things going on right now that are like a fantasy. And, and it's a fantasy of a group of people that don't understand what it's like not to have a silver spoon in their mouth. So uh, speaking of fantasies, huge meeting they called. I mean, an enormous meeting uh, on the 28th uh, was uh, the meeting. And um, in this enormous meeting, I mean, they called every operative, all the SSP was there, all the black nobility was there, silent circle, operatives from around the world, enormous meeting. This was almost like your Bretton Woods, but for all things in the world. So in this meeting, uh, everybody thought uh, they were coming to the meeting to discuss, and they did discuss, and this went on for, you know, two days. It, it went on on the 28th and on the 29th, um, so uh, hence the reason why it wasn't, wasn't around. Mm -hmm. And this was supposed to be how they were going to run the world, the direction the entire world was going to go into. And uh, based on the fact they figured that they would have some money coming from somewhere, why, I don't know, uh, by then. Mm. Well, turns out a lot of this was tied to some old information that they had regarding uh, celestials and the different colors of tribes. And we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so, uh, they have also figured out that they did not have what they thought they had since then. But then they came to the second half of the meeting and basically told everybody that nothing was, we, they need another week. Uh, something happened with their systems, like it was theirs in the first place. And um, something happened with their systems and that they were going to need another week or so to sort that out before everybody got paid. You know, so surprising, really. I mean, just a total shocker. Yeah. So uh, this was late Wednesday and again um, on early Thursday. Well, by Thursday, everybody started getting really upset. Um, Thursday morning, it was early, an early meeting. And the comments uh, that were made when they were backed into a corner was, and I want to thank the deep state for this, you know, they say, I want to thank my parents when you win like a <laughs> Grammy or something, you know, I want to thank the deep state. <laughs> they actually told them that I am responsible for messing up their systems. So that's why they need a little more time. Okay. That's they actually, actually good. said my name and that I am responsible. And you know what? They're right. <laughs> I am. That's the first bit of truth I've ever heard come out of these people's yeah. mouth. But it gave me an enormous amount of street cred. Yes, it did. So I'm like, yes. <laughs> so uh, everybody was very upset that they would not get an update for at least a week uh, after this uh, conversation took place. So they scheduled a call actually for 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time today with everyone, all of these people that came to the how we're going to dominate the world meeting. And wouldn't you know it, the only ones that showed up were Langley Phi, the global headquarters people, and the silent circle and black nobility people. Nobody else showed up. So it was all, supposed to be like all the, the people that came to that really big meeting or yes, all those people. Militaries to come were back. involved. 
yeah, militaries okay. and intelligence agencies and everything from all over the world to get contracts and hear about the new narrative of world domination and plans. So for the first time ever, though, this morning, no governments showed up, no militaries showed up, no operatives showed up. The lead, alleged leaderships are the only ones that showed up. Usually it was the other way around. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. But no one showed up. What do you think that means? Mm, I don't know. This just happened this morning. Yeah. But I will tell you this much. For an hour later, there was another meeting scheduled between all of them. To which by they went into this education, uh, last I looked, which was about 10, 15 minutes ago, uh, they were looking at um, uh, now doing a Q&A. Uh, they were looking at the real structure of the world, where orders came from, where money comes from, how things are really done. Um, there was a very nice uh, bit of, uh, I don't know what you want to say. I, You know, I... I'm not even going to call it class. I'm just going to say an intel briefing. How's that? I won't. Uh, With defend. correct intel. Yeah. Joint Chiefs of Staff were there uh, or are there because the meeting's still going on. Mm -hmm. uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff are in there. Mil uh, GCHQ is in there. Uh, uh, the Russians are in there. Uh, the SVR, GRU um, uh, is there. Uh, that's Russian Intelligence, GRU. Mm -hmm. So um, SVR. Uh, that's like our CIA. Uh, there are people from the CIA, different agencies from around the world. South Africa's there. Uh, so this is interesting. Uh, it's very interesting. And um, so I didn't get it didn't get much further because we're about three hours into this meeting, and now they're just about the last hour. It's been a Q and A. So I'm not sure how that's going to all turn out, but. The one thing I find interesting is this is the first time no one showed up. Mm -hmm. So this could mean that they're trying to make a change. Now, as I understand it, only probably about 80% of the people to maybe even higher now, now that they've gotten some correct information that they can go verify, um, <clears throat> uh, were ready for something different literally hoping and praying that we would, you know, be able to come through before then and and uh, before the week was up because they're so sick of going to these meetings. It's ridiculous. 20% still want to go along with the program, uh, creating civil war. Uh, it is also the reason why we're seeing things heat up a little bit with the Hezbollah. Uh, the U.S. military is in, um, allegedly attacking Yemen and the Houthis at the moment, which is a rebel group there. Uh, and we're seeing a lot of uh, Israel drone strikes, those kind of things um, happening in the Middle East right now. And it's all related to the orders being given by Langley Five Global Headquarters and the Palavincini family that pretty much runs the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So they're just trying to do everything they possibly can to keep their plan going as long as they can until they can come up with something, anything that they're going to do. And those chances are going down and down and down and down and not up and up and up. Mm -hmm. uh, and and at least everybody that could actually do something is starting to get some other information. These are political operatives. Uh, there are people in there with the Trump camp. I, I guess you would call it Trump camp. I don't know what to call it. You know, dead people. Mm -hmm. Dead people number one, dead people number two, presidential candidate one and two. There are people in there uh, having this discussion. Um, you know, they're starting to learn a little bit more about us, what we're doing, how we're moving forward, the progress that we've made, uh, that real progress, and actually that we have pretty much told the truth the whole time. You know, we have not given, made any false promises, nothing that we can't deliver on. If we say we're going to do something, then we actually do it. If we say we're going to try, then we try. You know, if they say, if we say, no, that's not going to happen, then no, that's not going to happen. So we try to do everything we possibly can as upfront with full clarity, you know, pulling no punches, no sugarcoating, no calling it like it isn't. Um, 
on our side of it. And that's been very consistent for a very long time. You know, you remember, I mean, I've been here since 2017. Mm -hmm. That's an awful long time of being consistent as far as these people are concerned and the information's getting out there. You know, I, I really have no life, you know, as far as anything else I do here, but you know, as far as that is concerned, um, you know, it's, it's something that you can absolutely count on. Um, so that's a positive. So we'll see what ends up happening over the weekend. I anticipate this is not going to be a one day meeting. I anticipate that these meetings probably will go on for a couple of days. Uh, there are still some people that are not totally convinced, uh, that this is what they want to do, but the, but the majority are basically saying they want to do something else. Well, we don't need everybody on board, right? If that 20% wanted to do something else, as nefarious as it might be, does that really matter to us from our perspective? Well, you know, it's always better to go into something when you have everybody swinging the right bat. Uh, you know, the 80% are just as talented as the 20%. There just happens to be more of them on the other side. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you have 20% of the world still against you, uh, you know, it's going to be a battle to the end. Uh, I, you know, there are some people that are just, um, have filled their cup full. Exactly. Uh, it's going to be their way. Um, they have a different understanding of what power actually means. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they're just going to keep going. You know, I could have been a contender. I don't know. Maybe they just want to get their people back in the white house or something. And, you know, according to what I'm hearing in uh, from their superiors is that uh, whoever ends up back in there is going to end up turning the government over to them anyway, and we won't have a White House, you know, based on what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing. And, you know, again, they always put out in movies what they're going to do, you know, yeah. what they're planning on doing. Um, and I don't think this is any exception because the back chatter is matching. Um, yeah. Just so you know, if you're watching this, we're having a lot of technical difficulties today. They don't yes. want me to tell you uh, what they're doing behind the scenes. Um, if we did were to tell you what they're actually doing versus what they're thinking about doing behind the scenes, uh, then this would be the shortest news broadcast <laughs> in the history of the world. <laughs> Seriously, they're they're all talk and very little to show for it. Yeah. If Dr. Evil were to have a knitting circle where you gossip about who's doing what, and then you're, you know, you're at, the, you might end up with a sweater if you were in a knitting circle, but I don't even think these people are knitting together that at this point. Yeah. But some of the things they were planning on, they just didn't fully understand. And I'm going to take you through that now. And it's important for you to understand it too, because it's part of our world history. Um, so last time we talked, we talked a little bit about celestials and how mm -hmm. humans born of Earth are celestials and how we were very important to the creation of the universe. And right. with great power comes great responsibility. It just sometimes didn't see just how much. And then there were some new control factors that reared their ugly head. So in this meeting, one of the conversations uh, that happened was a group of Russians started talking about what they wanted to do and how they seemed to have more power than a lot of the other people on the call, which is what they told them. Now, I was like, why the Russians? I'm like, this is weird, you know? Mm -hmm. So you had both the Order of the Red Dragon Russians there. And you also had the Order of the White Dragon there, which are part Russian, part German. Mm -hmm. And um, you also had the respective eagles. Um, you know, there's currently no one taking the position of Black Eagle at the moment, but there are, there are those that represent, and then you have White Eagle. And so they were all there and they were claiming that they had a lot of power and that they were going to go ahead and pull some financial system trigger. So I was like, financial system trigger? What the? 
heck is it that you're going to do? So, you know, I started watching mm -hmm. and something interesting I, I saw. Uh, so I thought I would um, share this with you because there's a lot of talk on the internet. You know, a lot of people talk about Indian tribes and that they should own all of this stuff. And then there's, you know, the Chinese think they want to own everything and the Russians want to own everything, you know, and then there's this whole push and pull factor. But it all goes back to us originally. So if you've been following me for a while, you'll have heard me say that I am a Rus. Mm -hmm. Now, Rus, yes, part of the territory of the Rus, former Rus Empire before the 250,000 year old invasion. <clears throat> uh, stemmed all went all the way from the United Kingdom all the way uh, through Russia, half of China, all the way south to Turkey, and throughout all of Western Europe. So this was predominantly what you would call the Rus Empire at the time. And we really didn't call them empires. It was more of a tribe territory. Uh, and this particular area um, was the area of what you would call the white tribe. So, yes, the skin of the people that lived there were, was predominantly, not all, but predominantly white. Uh, and that doesn't make them special uh, necessarily. It just it was just the way that it was. Mm -hmm. uh, we covered a lot of territory at the time. Uh, and the white actually refers to the gate that is there uh, in, in the land now called Moscow, which it wasn't at that time. Mm -hmm. And the black became an overlay about a hundred years ago. So, um, but that doesn't mean it was the original black territory. Now, the original black territory has a lot to do with a being known in religious texts and also throughout Vedic cosmology when they discuss the ages called the Kali Ma. Now the Kali Ma is also known as the Black Mother uh, in translation. Uh, the Dark Ages were also known as the Kali Yuga and we would be looking at the Kali Ma uh, being the one that ushered in the Dark Ages. But we also have a black dragon and we also have a black eagle in the human terms. So those two groups were what you would call um, minor management uh, along with the Russians, the Germans uh, being a minor management as it relates to the spectrum of colors we call the halls of Amente, the planes between planes. Now, not only in human terms, and we'll talk about the other colors too. There were other tribes here present at that time. Uh, and in human terms, uh, we know that the way that colors are created is from the fractionating or the division of white and black. Mm. Only from the division of those two can you control all the other colors. Hence the reason why the top of the food chain would be white or black. Now this has nothing to do with the color of your skin, so please don't take this the wrong way if you're not either one of these. That does This is just the way that the planet was structured at that time. Mm -hmm. Now the black territory would actually extend all the way through southern China, throughout the oceanic region and the entire African continent. So that's it, you know, it, obviously continents looked a little different back then, uh, but uh, that whole region uh, would have been considered black. Uh, and then if you are brown, you would have uh, inhabited the Middle Eastern area uh, in Northern Africa and um, an equally large area, uh, basically in comparison. It would go a lot farther no north than it does today, uh, what you would consider the Middle East, uh, 
uh, is up for debate. Probably the northern, a good one third of the African, northern part of the African continent uh, belonged to the brown at the time. Yellow, that's a given. Uh, certain parts of uh, Asia, uh, extending all the way from India through to China, so it was a smaller area. Uh, and uh, the red would be North America and South America. So the world being divided by colored, but we really weren't divided at the time. We all traded together. We all got along just fine. We were just all basically doing our jobs. So, and, so Kim, what would the point be then? Maybe you're going to explain this, but mm -hmm. why divide us up into tribes? What's the purpose? Well, it, before the fine, the last war, several million years ago, um, it was about keeping balance and peace on Earth. See, because celestials and humans weren't originally from Earth. You know, you've often heard we were brought here as human beings, and there's a definitive reason for that. And it happened many millions of years ago uh, that we were brought here. Now, Earth, for a long time, even before the Saurians were here, was an uninhabited planet. And it wasn't necessary for it to be inhabited because it was basically a piece of source out here co-creating with source and populating the universes, both dark and light. Mm -hmm. Then when we ventured into the dark ages and the wars after wars after wars between the different races, uh, eventually anti-source had more had taken basically earth away from source therefore mm -hmm. predominantly not entirely uh it was taken away about 79 percent of its power in connection to source was taken away therefore in order to have a co-creative universe you still needed to have power here on earth Hence the reason why they actually brought humans here in the first place. The colors of humans at the time originally represented different densities of creation. Uh, it also represented uh, different races, both source and anti-source uh, and neutral source. Um, and, and you were responsible for the creation for a certain area of the universe, and you understood that at that time. Hmm. So red would be more related to the causal plane. Uh, you, you know, if you were white, you were looking at the upper realms. So you were co-creating with Earth, even though with you all here, you know, with all humans here, with all the original tribes and with all the original colors and realm assignments and portals and gateways to those realms, we still were having 79% of all our energy drained off us. And this went on until recently. Yeah. So we, you know, we have been fighting an uphill battle, but we were also creating a lot for anti-source. There were a number of, of matrices in place around this planet that would harness and siphon off your energy to then co-create an anti-source Earth matrix. And there were several of them, not just one. So understanding the color of your skin doesn't have anything to do with superiority. You just had an assignment. Okay. But after the war happened 250,000 years ago, we as human beings were pushed aside, became solely batteries, not allowed to travel and do our creating anymore in those realms. So everything kind of went stagnant, both up and down. However, 
as part, and we've talked about this part before, but I'll reiterate because it kind of ties all in together. So as part of the peace alleged, and I, I call it the take a peace agreement, uh, but the seal we had discussed several months back in the news, as part of this agreement, people were also assigned colors predominantly of the bloodlines. Remember, as it says in the books, it says that they angels mated with the humans and, you know, and then they became special. Well, not really, but you did have, you know, the families, the orders and the bloodlines, families, this gave you the Enki bloodline, the Enlil bloodline, the Marduk bloodline, the Red Queen bloodline. Mm. Yep. Uh, and it gave you an Abraxas bloodline and a Lucifer bloodline. And, a, you know, so all of those that were participating in the seal all had their own bloodlines. Now, colors of your skin, at one point in time, it just basically identified you and where your region was and everybody understood what they were doing. Then it got morphed into control systems with the birth of the Emerald Order Covenant, which then birthed the Halls of Amente, which then allowed for a separation of colors fractionated in between the planes of existence to give them more control over all us batteries and throughout the multiverse and to create throughout the multiverse because they couldn't necessarily and didn't want to create of the light but they wanted to create of darkness. Therefore, they needed to control the white. Hence, their crowning glory on this planet was when the Bolshevik Revolution happened in Russia and they managed to take over the white gate mm -hmm. and give it a complete and total makeover, so to speak, or give it that black overlay. Right. Because with white or black, you can control all colors and you can create all colors. Therefore, you can create in all densities, all dimensions, all, um, all planes of existence throughout the universe in all sections mm -hmm. of all planes. And it goes into further breakdown. So the families, now on the black sun side, they call them the eagle families. And on the dragon side, they called them the dragon families. Now, these are two different types of bloodlines, and both would work together, but each one had a white eagle and a white dragon, a silver eagle and a silver dragon. So those families were from particular regions, and it identified them as to which planes, not only in computers, that they could control, but also throughout the multiverse. And it identified them as to where they came from. So where we had colors of skin that we, you know, originally were born with in this version of humans anyway, they also have color identifiers. Obviously, we don't have purple people running around or silver people, but mm -hmm. it's their bloodline. It identifies their bloodline. So in this meeting that happened recently, okay, so... That being said, you were responsible for a certain area of Earth and all its treasures okay. uh, back in the day. Then when the bloodline and the seal was put in place, all of your families were pushed aside as human beings <clears throat> and those you're descendant of. And they took all of your treasures and the families took them over, at least the management of those treasures. Does that make sense? It looks yeah. like I lost you. So they no. took over the management of the treasures of the white, the black, the brown, the red, and the yellow. Okay. And they added the rest of the colors in between. So, for example, white also controlled red. And, you know, red probably controlled X, you know, and, and that's why they changed them all up. So um, we had, like, silver was controlled by black. And brown might have been controlled by green, uh, the dragon family or green eagle as they call it. So why did we give that up? Or was there a war? Was there, th was this done by force? Cause why else would we give up? It was done by force. It was done by force. It was done by force. Uh, there was a huge war here, 200. That was, that's your Atlantean war or when we were invaded and okay. the war wasn't even between the humans. 
the war was actually between folks from other places and attempt to take control over Keystone Earth. Uh, okay. Yeah, at the time humans were brought here, there was already uh, source. Source pretty much had Earth 100%, mm -hmm. the light side of source. Mm -hmm. And then once the Dark Ages began, then there was a whole, all of these matrixes were put in place and then further control came 250,000 years ago. And then we were pretty much, all us colored folk um, were pretty much <laughs> enslaved from there on out. And you're predominantly, you know, you might be a mix of one of these two colors, but you're pretty much as humanity, your base roots are in one or more of these colors. Okay. Um, as the human race is today anyway. <clears throat> So from their, their standpoint, knowing the fact that white and quote unquote black can control the rest of the spectrum, that is why the Russians came to the meeting claiming that they controlled all of their treasures. Mm. And therefore they could flip the financial system at any moment in time, claiming they still had this control. But alas, no. No. I mean, I understand their logic on mm -hmm. some level, but did no one have a plan for actually how that's going to happen? <laughs> and if they could do that, why didn't they do that a long time ago? Well, exactly. It's like uh, you win the lottery and you don't tell anybody and you put the yeah. ticket in your drawer you know, or in a safe place in a safe and you hold on to it and you're like, but I won the lottery. Maybe right. you're not ready to cash it in. Maybe you don't want to tell anybody yet. You're not sure how to handle it, whatever. But you always think you have a lottery ticket or or an ace in the hole, so to speak. Yeah. And you don't. And then imagine one day you go to try to cash in that ticket. <laughs> and, and it expired. <laughs> and it, it expired. Or you didn't have the winning numbers after all. That would be a bad day. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. That was a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bad day for them on Wednesday. Trust me. That was a bad day. Yeah. So they actually did try to trip the figure, the, the trigger uh, later on Wednesday afternoon. Uh, and the Russians have figured out they're not in control. Hmm. Now, we'll talk a little bit about more about what's happening with Russia. <clears throat> so the Red Dragon is from that region. Uh, and it pretty much encompasses most of Eastern Europe as far as their limited control structures now and the way they redivided the earth by colors. Uh, and the white, dra right, white eagle, so to speak, is Russian. So even though, so there's a fight going on between the two groups right now. Uh, there in Russia. And it's been going on for a little while because the white eagle feels they have more power than the red dragon does from that particular region. Uh, they also, uh, the white eagle, uh, would like to reinstall uh, communism in the USSR uh, empire. Uh, so they're still looking at it like the Russian empire is not the Russian empire. They're looking at it as the Rus empire. Mm -hmm. and the lines drawn and how much they would control in the world. And they are also looking at it um, as uh, they, they could control more and create communism in, in the USSR if they were to take over all of Europe, you know, the whole region there as it was during the Rus time. The Red Dragon uh, is arguing with them uh, and they would like to reinstall the Tsar because that is when uh, the Red Dragons actually ruled the region before it was taken over by the Order of the Black Sun. So this fight has been going on now for for quite some time, but it's kind of a fight between two folks that don't actually have what they think they have. Yeah. Now, number one, <laughs> I am a Rus. <laughs> I am more Rus than all of you people which means that technically that is my gate that you're claiming ownership of and my treasures that you're claiming ownership of. So 
as far as bloodlines are concerned, you know, if you get on the phone and you tell one of these families that you're a Rus, even one of the European families, they'll say, oh, that's not a bloodline. Well, yes, it is. It's just not one you recognize because you torched us all. Mm -hmm. But as of Wednesday evening, congratulations, all of you white, black, brown, red, and yellow people that are listening to this call because you now have your treasures back as the human race. So they have no legal binding whatsoever to any of this part anymore. So what what happened to, you know, cause that? To well, happen? they were officially basically at this moment in time, they've officially been notified. OK, they have no claim whatsoever to anything that they're claiming to control, nor its governments. And this, I believe, is a part of what set off the meetings today. Mm. Because even governments are realizing they are not, those people are not in control of their land anymore because the notices went out and they went out to the archivist and the archivist notified governments, militaries, and for the first time ever, some of those people listened mm. and they paid attention. So the notification going out that they're not in control anymore of these regions and of the treasures of that region was huge, a huge change. Now, we have taken control of the minerals, we have taken control of the assets, but the realization of that was an important step forward for humanity. Now, what comes of it, I don't know. It's yet to be seen because all of this is happening in real time as I'm talking to you in the last 48 hours. So big changes there, but another hurdle to cross. So in the course of making sure there was nothing left in the computer system of these families, uh, spectrum control returned to source meaning there's no more black required to make colors than the colors that you see on your planet around here. Uh, and as the siphons of energy and everything had been taken off, uh, as you know, uh, we've already talked about that. Uh, and we are gaining more and more of our celestial powers back, which is a positive for all of us. We now, um, you know, there's a lot of things that make sense in this to me too. Um, you know, or at least American history and, and not only American history, you know, throughout the world, you know, everybody talks about the white, 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 right? There was the whole Nazi movement. If you're not white, you're not right mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, the beating down of like, you know, the black race and the back of the bus and Rosa Parks and all this kind of stuff. And you start to think about all of this when you put it into relation or, or you make it all relative, right? So what would have happened if the black race took back black? And I'm not saying black people are evil. Everybody remember, we're all here of source, right? We're all yeah. doing the source thing at the time, which was a tri trinary source. So um, nobody's right and nobody's wrong. But imagine it, how much power they would have. Yeah. And it makes sense to me why we keep having these color wars too. And everybody's got labels and, you know, whether it's a religious label or it's a, it's a color label and, you know, a black man in the news, you know, shot a so-and-so yeah. person. And why aren't they just Jim? You know, mm -hmm. why, you know, if their name is Jim or whatever, why aren't they just call them Jim? But the color wars is a real thing, and it went back pretty deep. And then what would happen if you took back control of your colors, mm -hmm. you know, and therefore your realms and your gates, the ones that you protected um, all of this time? Can you see why it's so scary for these people? Sure. It never made real sense to me. I'm like, where are they going with this? You know, until yesterday, uh, sorry, Wednesday night um, into yesterday, when I really started to take a look at why all the color wars. Now, to further control the human race into creating in the way, because remember the families are trying to do something with darkness and they're trying to adhere to this anti-source matrix and they're controlling colors in a negative way, 
whereas we use them in a positive way before as mm -hmm. all the races of earth um, I know you probably watched the last news, Sunny, like five times, and then I was did, like, "Actually," <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm doing it again to you, and I'm so sorry. Now I have my weekend homework. No, I just kidding. <laughs> okay. So, what was born thereafter, and this is what allowed anti-source so much control over humans, and then, of course, their little tiny way down the food chain, human beings we call the Order of the Dragon and the Black Sun although they think very highly of themselves. I mean, if mm. these people, uh, if their actual physical body were representative of their ego, there'd be no room on this planet for anything else because their ego is so huge. They yeah. would be like, they would make Godzilla look tiny, you know, <laughs> like teeny tiny little ant because they're enormous. But anyway, they're really, you know, crazy people. Well, the introduction also came around that time of what we call human interface technology. And this is something that was used in a lot of different ways in a lot of events we, we remember throughout history. Now, human interface technology does two things. <clears throat> It allows for quantum AI systems, dark and light, uh, in neutral, uh, to interface with humans. Mm -hmm. That also includes the interface that you have, for example, with your banking institution. It allows for that energy to then flow through and turn into matter and actually show up in your bank account. So there's one thing that we encountered but it was like a, going down a, an ant hole. You see the little tiny hole and you think, oh, let's just fix this interface in the financial system and we'll be all good. We'll stop any other interfaces and then replace it with the light system because we're trying to integrate the light system and actually get rid of any remnants of alpha now. Right. Um, okay. So interesting um, technology this is. Uh, this also allowed for um, a learning technology, which was tied to the growth rate of development as well. Uh, it's called a GAN. Uh, it's used in current like chatbot GPT, you know, all of the popular ones too, um, uh, that would learn the web, learn the internet, learn the terms, and it would start giving you better and better answers over time. Well, in the quantum world, that's a whole nother story. Uh, it monitors essence, energy, your responses to things, your spending habits, all these types of things. And it would have been tied to Agenda 2030, or mm. originally Agenda 2020, and it keeps getting pushed off. Uh, it also uh, learns uh, the human body. Uh, and talks about which diseases to proliferate, when uh, to proliferate them, uh, draining of energy, uh, powering of its resources, um, interfacing with the human through your technologies, uh, and the human version that we were all so scared of called Echelon, you know, and there was a movie about, the Snowden movie uh, talked about Echelon, if you've never heard of it. Uh, you know, and we were thinking, oh, my God, we're being monitored all over the place. Ah, you know, censorship, ah, fact checking, you know, and that made you panic. Well, you haven't seen nothing till you've seen human interface technology uh, as it related to the Omega system in quantum AI. Uh, it could control your bodily functions through mm -hmm. your cell phone, uh, through your car, uh, through your technology, through any kind of electronic technology on the planet it would interface with you. Uh, it would also have underlying what I call pheromones. Uh, pheromones are, made, are things that uh, humans emit, you know, in the regular people world uh, that uh, elicit a reaction from you. So that could be a love reaction, a chemistry. They say you have chemistry with another person, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of reaction. Um, you know, and it also tells you when your kids are in danger, you know, there's a, a different pheromone, allegedly, that is released 
you know, when humans are sick, uh, it's also something that is released unbeknownst to yourself. You actually to like, for example, a dog, you know, someone with a very keen sense of smell, you smell sick, um, you know, and therefore your pet might give you a little extra attention or something like that. But um, pheromones can also make you do different things. Mm -hmm. It can alter your body. It could alter your limbic system. It can do a lot of different things to harm you through technologies. So the interface here was incredibly um, important to understand from the amount of manipulation that not the dumb humans walking the planet, and by dumb, I'm not referring to you, I'm referring to the deep state and their gossip circles that they have every day. Yeah. I'm referring to non-human control over human beings in order to influence the creation and proliferation of the earth human anti-source matrix. I mean, we were used in so many ways. It's incredible to me. I mean, I would be here for three, four, five hours, maybe even five days. And I will put out my notes so that if for those of you that want to take the time to really, you know, look at all the different types of human fa interface technologies there are. But part of this human interface technology was also the release of viruses and pandemics and all kinds of things throughout history as well. So um, how does the deep state know there's going to be potentially another pandemic or a bird flu pandemic or another strain of this or a strain of that? It's the human interface technology. Now, they don't have the ability to utilize it to release any kind of pandemic any longer. Um, however, they still would have had in the past some limited ability to read it and to see what standing orders were coming up and then to react and act accordingly. And then where would the orders have come from? Is it anti-source would have No, the, the GAN, the G-A-N. Uh, the, the system itself would the, create yep, this. The quantum AI sentient central processing unit that processes information and then goes in accordance with its programming. So it, we, <laughs> And let's just say the opposite of we also programmed AI systems as a celestial. Mm -hmm. So all the dark energy that they created on this planet at one point in time, dark consciousness, fear, uh, subconscious thoughts actually fed those programs. And the things that we feared the most are the things that it would create. Okay. And was that only allowed to exist because we were in a dark age? Like if the dark was actually trying to create balance, would they still have been able to do that? Or would that system still have been able to do that? No, it would have happened in a more balanced way okay. um, in the past. But in actuality, you know, until 250,000 years ago, well, maybe 300 at this time, because um, it was just slightly before the Atlantean War, <clears throat> as far as here on Earth is concerned. Um, I would say uh, it wasn't a possibility at all, because we were retaining a majority of our energy before the Dark Ages rolled around, and then now we got even less. Um, and as a matter of fact, as far as humans were concerned, <laughs> you really didn't get much at all. Um, yeah. You know, as we talked about last time, you know, you were getting like a third of a third of a third, you know, by the time you you sliced it. Uh, hence the reason for sleeping and recharging and things that we talked about the last time. Uh, seasons, sunlight, daylight, why we, you know, darkness, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Uh, it was all in the name of uh, the programs that were running. Um, <clears throat> so uh, as far as. Uh, celestial status is concerned of yourselves. Uh, we are entering into uh, definite new territory uh, with the lack of spectrum control. Uh, 
uh, on their side of it, the realization of that, uh, the influence that could potentially have over governments, militaries, uh, which is what we're seeing now. Everybody's trying to figure out who runs what. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the ability to, again, um, have those gateways is a little ways off. Uh, where we'll be participating uh, on a different level here. Uh, by the time it's all said and done, um, Earth will will end up being the co-creator with Source, and it won't be your responsibility anymore, although you still have the capacity to do those things. But then you're free to roam about the cabin as well. Uh, <laughs> Meaning so, the universe? <laughs> yeah, you're free to roam about the cabin. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, so... It, we have a lot of positive things happening on our side. Uh, the interface technology, uh, some of it we are taking over, some of it we're just getting rid of. And what I mean by that is there's no reason for us to uh, have a disease implementation program. Uh, mm -hmm. But we would, however, like to have the interface with full interface uh, of the new of the light system, the new system uh, from last week with all of your technologies. I think that would be hoove us uh, in, in a positive way. Uh, so we are we are definitely uh, working on that integration feverishly for the last three or four days. Um, so yeah, uh, positive things on our side. Uh, maybe the government will stop trying to kill us. What has the reaction Kim been to this new light system, whatever we're calling it, <laughs> light system, um, from the deep state because they have they understand that something has changed, right? Oh yeah, they fully get it. They fully get it. But remember, they always thought that they can control everything. You know, yeah. so they're the white and the black and the brown and the red and the yellow and the green and the purple and the gray. Um, so they're all the colors, you know? Yeah. So we can control, we can control this new system too, you know? Okay. Uh, that's what it is in their mind. So they don't give you credit for starting the system they don't realize that no remember they told them actually in the beginning it was their system right okay yeah everything is theirs you know but what's they have no idea things. how it works or anything <laughs> no they didn't know how it worked or anything like that so there's that um but so um yeah they did try to claim it was theirs and then then of course you know it finally got to too many questions over too much time too many smart operatives playing operative games with these people, trying to get real answers that they already know the answer to, but just getting them to actually admit it. And finally, they came out with it that I messed it up. I messed it up. <laughs> messed it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm the one that has created the delay and the disruptions in the system. So they need a little bit more time to fix it. But what street cred I just got. Yeah, that, that's true. You know? The entire deep state has said, I have messed up their system. <laughs> Thank you, guys. It's a badge you know? of honor, really. Yeah, it's a badge of honor, really. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what do they say? You know a person by their enemies? And wow, you yeah. know. Definitely send shockwaves throughout the world. That and the fact that it has become well known that none of the colored eagles nor any of the colored dragons have any control over the treasures, quote unquote, treasures of Earth anymore. So the colors don't mean anything anymore, basically. No. I mean, I'd like to get a tan in the summertime. You know? <laughs> I might like, <laughs> might, might like to be a different shade. You know, if I stay yeah. on the sun too long, I could be a different shade. You know? <laughs> Maybe not the red color. I don't know that you want to be red. <laughs> yeah. That would hurt. That we had that with camera malfunctions already. I did red. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> we couldn't figure out why the camera kept doing it. So, yeah. No, I'm definitely about the same color as you, Sonny, and on any yeah. given day. Right now, it's uh, the, the elevation here is so high, so the sun is so strong. So you could wear number whatever you want, sunscreen, sunblock, and my skin is still going to turn brown. Yeah. So yeah. not a whole lot I can do about that. <laughs> but um, yeah, so definitely getting a little bit of color. I don't get out much these days, but when I do, it <laughs> doesn't so take long. You started to mention the the process and how things are going with the light system taking mm -hmm. over any remnants of of alpha. Uh, do you have a timeline or you know as far as 
I know Mike's laughing in my ear right now when I say, do you have a timeline? Come on, Kim. Yeah. I wish or I timeline, did. Time, whatever. You yeah, know. I wish I did. Um, you know, I, the, I think the human interface technology uh, that we have now reprogrammed and taken over uh, is going very well. Um, uh, we are getting definitely more of an interface. Uh, you know, the matrix breakdown also needs to happen. Um, so we're doing that as well, uh, the finishing off of those matrices uh, for the different colors in the, in the uh, not that we have the, those in between the planes anymore, but still, there's still computer matrices that we need to get rid of um, and stuff like that. So I, honestly, um, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's very soon, but I won't make any promises that I can't deliver on. So I can't, I can't. I can't do that, <laughs> yeah. but I can tell you that um, it looks good. I mean, it definitely looks better. We've had to reprogram the way money is issued. Uh, that was one another thing as well, because remember we were adhering to an old, an old way of doing things. Um, positive money, zero money, money one, money you know, uh, money one through zero through nine, um, energy uh, zero through nine. Um, uh, so there's still a few things that were involved in the human interface technology that we had to reprogram in order to make it function for us versus um, a joint system that it was before. Uh, so taking over a technology doesn't take that long. Reprogramming a technology is a, you've got to find all the nuances that made it a dual technology. Um, taking and out then, all the bad ones. And doing this, Kim, does that mean all the the space junk that you were having such a hard time cleaning up because it's like everywhere, right? Does that mean all yeah. that becomes obsolete if it's a different system, like that it doesn't even really matter? Well, them? mattering to computers and the transferring of money is one thing. Mattering to the health and welfare of your person is another. Mm. So um, if we do find anything else, uh, we definitely clean it up for sure. Sure. Uh, if it comes up as an issue, um, understanding uh, the separation uh, between in the flipping of colors in their control, and I don't mean just color of skin, I mean I'm talking about spectrum here, spectrum mm -hmm. control, spectral controls, um, I think is an, is an important factor. Uh, understanding your your jobs and your as a celestial where you were from where you need to be um, eventually at some point in the future and which gates are your gates and future trades and travel and all of those types of things i think is important um <clears throat> but i i would definitely say um as it relates to the spectrum controls uh there was definitely some junk that was interfering along with that human interface technology. Mm. So, you know, like the Wuhans of the world and the Northrop Grumman's of the world are only relevant uh, because they possess a technology that can interface with the Omega system through the human interface technology. Uh, they right. can connect their neural links uh, through one of those colors in some of those systems. That's important to know. Um, you know, how the deep state does what they do. And the thing I will consistently stress, um, you know, if I were to say anything to these people that are losing their mind right now, is that I know they think they had power. I know that they were told from a young age that they are special in a special bloodline. I know they don't recognize any of our light bloodlines, and I understand that. Um, but you always got orders from someplace else. And if you didn't follow those orders, your human interface technology would not function. You were given money to follow orders and directions and instructions. Yeah. We, on the other hand, you know, I guess you could say we do as well, but we do directly from the source and not some alien race somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, 
one other point uh, to make. <clears throat> Spectrums. So we would have had a trinary spectral system, which means that light would, was created with both anti-source, neutral source, and source. Mm -hmm. Both, all three parties had light and had spectrums of colors that were under their control and therefore their bloodline control at one point in time. With the changeover of the spectral system, pretty much all light is now controlled by source. Are we going to need to have multiple colors throughout the universe? control we need color we we won't see anything if we don't have color um but um it's just being issued in a different way now uh so that is also in process it's not 100 percent complete yet because that takes time uh but uh it's pretty well already well underway and in progress um so lots of changes in just a short period of time uh, there's a lot more than that. Um, yeah. You know, just we only have so much time here on the news. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, definitely progress on our side. Uh, we'll see what the end response is from governments now that they know that their colors are not their colors. They're our colors um, now. Uh, and what that actually means to them, if they really understand the agreements that came out from their perspective it looks like it's control over all the kingdoms that on of earth that's what it looks like and that's fine that's enough so that they at least get a grip at least politically speaking um who's actually in control of what landmass so russia i look forward to moving you all out of the kremlin <laughs> at some point in time <laughs> i actually do you need to give the Russian people a chance, at least at this point, you know. Yeah. You guys blowing everything up is not really going to work out. So. Anyway, that is the World Situation Report for Friday. Any questions? I mean, again, it's a, it's a lot to take in. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, it does make a lot of sense. You explaining the colors and the color wars that we seem to be having. Yeah. It makes sense that this would track back to something that happened a long time ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. We've been labeling, they've been labeling us for a long time. Yeah, they have. I mean, I thought it was just to keep us separate and, you know, from co-creating together and with source and everything. I mean, I'm sure that's, that's part of it, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that's definitely part of it. The overlays, control that kind of thing putting black at the top of the heap instead of white overlaying the white for the black um uh, at the gate in moscow you know is another thing too right. you know for total control well god bless them they, they they're gonna need it may they yeah. bless may they be blessed the same way we were blessed <sighs> i just hope some more of these people come to their senses because i mean time's up well, like I said, uh, something really positive happened. We have a rebellion meeting going on. That's a positive thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we'll see what comes of it. I'm not holding my breath, not stopping what we're doing, you know, in any way. We're listening, you know, for sure. But, um, you know, I, I was actually shocked when no one showed up this morning. Yeah. I thought for I sure like the diehards would show up or somebody would show up. Nobody actually showed up. I think they're tired. Except for those that were getting ready to be the uh, delivery of the bull, um, <laughs> yeah, story. Yeah. Yeah, the story of the bull uh, that mm -hmm. they give a lot. Yeah. Yes. They dish a lot of that bull out. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. They've they told do. a lot of stories about bulls. They, maybe they must like bulls. Maybe they're ranchers at heart. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <sighs> wow. I know. God bless them. Mm. So we'll see what happens over the weekend. I anticipate these meetings are probably going to go on for a few days. Okay. Probably now through Monday, I'm guessing. All right. 
Well, we'll see. We'll see you back here hopefully on Monday. Give us an update. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Have a good Thank weekend. Thank you, Sunny. You too. Want to share news from UNN? Help us change the face of social media and use it for good. Connect with us through our online channels. Our social media team creates clips from each newscast you can easily share with people you care about. That's also where you'll find our UNN Meme of the Day, a great way to encourage critical thinking. Links to all our social media sites are available at the bottom of our website at unitednetwork.earth. Let's change the face of news together. That wraps up today's news update. Please share UNN with your friends and family. We need everyone to come together and help restore our planet. When news happens in your area, record and share it with us so together we can share it with the world. Remember, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I'm Sunny Galt. Join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the real news.